Hi folks. So we're going to review Bob Shaw's Ship of Strangers, which is a nice brief novel, less than 150 pages, and it reads kind of like a, a Saturday afternoon serial. There are four, I think, maybe five little episodes. Um, it reads almost like a set of short stories that's been, that's been kind of cobbled together into a novel, but I don't think it is. I think it's written deliberately like this. Uh, and this follows the crew of a survey ship. So these are these guys are sent out by Earth to go uh, get their sort of scientific survey done of a, a planet for potential colonisation or resource extraction or whatever at some point in the future. Um, and they're sort of the, the, the sphere of Earth's exploration is getting bigger and bigger. So the survey crews are increasingly stretched because they're covering more volume of space. If the main character is a guy called Dave Serganor, I think it is. Let's have a look. Yeah, Dave Ser Serganor or Serganor. And he's like the, he's done his stint in the survey crew. Um, and he's kind of at the beginning, he's kind of mulling over whether he wants to sort of throw in the towel and go back to Earth and settle down and all those things. Um, he's the he's the senior guy on the crew. I don't think he's a lot older than the others, but he's certainly more experienced. And his as they go through this series of adventures, he sort of goes through a sort of trough, um, well, a sort of an arc. Um, and by the end, he decides that he's going to sign on for another another tour because actually he he quite likes it and he quite likes being the experienced guy. He's kind of a bit standoffish and a bit sort of um, laid back uh, at the beginning, but he he more and more grows into his responsibilities as the most experienced person in the crew. So they have um, a series of uh, you know quite short. Uh, episodes as I say in this in this book uh, the first is on a planet where um, there's been an alien stranded unbeknownst to them for thousands of years it's it's a shape-shifting um, it's got shape-shifting capabilities and it uh, as, when they arrive it immediately cops on that, that this might be his way off the planet and he disguises himself as one of their survey craft so they go out in these rovers around the planet and he, and he um, disguises himself as one of those and then the ship's AI when they're all on their way back goes hang on a minute I only sent six out why are there seven of you and it tells them all immediately to stop and if they if they don't do exactly what he says he's going to zap them with the laser and that'll be they'll be toast anyway that that scenario sort of standoff plays out and um and comes to a denouement um and since it's an episode two you can kind of tell that um that things work out okay for the crew in the end but it's pretty tense and then they get um the next one that I recall anyway, they get onto a, a different planet this time and they um, they meet some uh, humanoids, uh, some aliens that uh, have the ability to time travel and that's their sort of, um, that's the, they've evolved to be able to time travel and they have a sort of, so they, they live um, in sort of four dimensions so they can move around on the planet like any other sort of um, individual would be able to but they can uh, they have refuges in the deep past where they can go um, and take shelter from whatever's going on in the world, including from uh, pesky survey craft from from Earth. And they get um, they follow uh, uh, one of these a pregnant female hominid um, or humanoid rather back to some point in the dim and distant past, millions of years back. And and so they're kind of stuck there because they were going on her coattails and. and Suffice to say, they get out of the scrape eventually, and uh, and then the the last one that I can recall is um, they go uh, really far out to the very edge of known space to survey a planet, and then but there's something goes wrong with their jump drive, and they end up literally in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing, nothing, not even interstellar dust. There's nothing. They're so far out, there's nothing, and their 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 jump system is bust. Um, and uh, and then and then after a while they realise not only that but they're also shrinking for reasons which aren't completely clear to me and they shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and they they're kind of saying their goodbyes because they think they're just going to disappear in a puff of smoke but um, that what happens is they shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and then they're back again and so there's this cycle of shrinking down to nothing and back again uh, and uh, again eventually they figure out how to get out of it and the, the so the ship's AI is one of the characters. Um, and he not only records everything that's going on, but he's, um, you know, intelligent. Uh, in fact, he's the captain of the ship, in fact. So anyway, as I say, by the time they get to the end, Dave 
Surigon or Sergeron, um, his name, yeah, Sergeon or beg your pardon, I've forgotten his name already, is um, uh, signs on again because he's grown used to being the voice experience on the crew and quite likes um, doing that. So this is the first first Bob Shaw book that I've read. I've got several now and um, in the nice pan lozenge uh, livery. Um, his writing is crisp, he packs a lot in, bearing in mind it's it's just just a touch over 150 pages. There's four, I think possibly five, I think four um, pretty good fully formed stories in there. The, the characterization is tight, it has to be in that shorter a book. There's really only sort of a handful of characters and, and Dave Serginor and the AI are the main ones. The others are sort of incidental and they kind of chop and change as, as people roll off their tour of duty. Um, and I think um, it's tight, it's efficient, uh, it doesn't muck around. And uh, so as my first Bob Shaw experience goes, it was a pretty good one. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading some of the others that I have um, as and when I get to them. Uh, but uh, I recommend it. I think I would give it, let me think. It's not fantastic or anything. It was, it was, it was a good read. So let's give it uh, a six and a half out of 10. Six and a half out of 10, it's decent. All right, um, I should be back soon. Bye for now.